All right, so uh, basically what I wanted to go through uh, with everyone this morning was um, the first thing is a review of uh, our day trades from our, our day trade setup from yesterday. Uh, the first thing we talked about, and this is a uh, document that we uh, put out every time we have a trade or a setup, we will um, print this up and post it in a document tab in the room at the bottom right hand. It's listed as, as you can see, day trade 220 2014. That's where it's listed. Uh, the day trade was to look to be buyers of a breakout above the last conditional change candle. We got that in the afternoon. That was what we talked about. We were um, looking at this market. We didn't want to take buy signals underneath the uh, pivot as it acted as resistance. And as you can see, even though it, was, it, was, uh, it went up here, it went down, made a new lower low, and then spiked straight up. So we wanted to be a buyer if it broke out above the last conditional change and the pivot point. We made mention that this would be a low profitability because from the low to the breakout, it's probably not going to offer a lot of extended price gains, but it's a higher probability trade setup. In fact, we came down using our day trade time frames, which is a three minute or even a five minute. You can see the breakout above 34.75. Stop goes below the breakout bar, and it's a one to one risk reward ratio, and of course, not only was that met, but it gave you some later in the afternoon. So with that said, this is the documents tab that can be found uh, based on the review of what our setups were. Um, as you know, every day we go through our daily positive thought just to reinforce what it takes to be a successful trader or achiever in any business or any human activity. It requires practice, practice, and more practice. So. You need to review to get back in a positive framework. We have to review what trades worked, what trades didn't, what setups are working now, what setups aren't working. If they're not working, figure out we need to go switch to something else. If they are working, we need to learn them and apply them. And that's what we're doing in this trading room each and every day. Next, for reports and events, this is the big uh, news that's coming out today. Earnings, BMO, is before the bell. This is what's coming out on the 21st. Most of these, like Ruth Chris's, uh, you know, not going to really impact the market. Uh, satellite, Dish Network, et cetera, et cetera, AAE. Uh, Ameren is a utility company. Weekly high-closed dojis. We will have a new listing of all of these stocks this week, um, uh, starting on Monday's planning and scanning. I had no new daily high-close or low-close. And we will have a new listing of if there is a change in seasonally weak sectors and a seasonally strong sector. So this every week, we're starting out with our intermediate to swing trades. These are the suggested recommended areas of entry. So people can look for stocks get near these entry levels. Then it's a forward slash. And then the next price means that's your stop, your risk factor. So that would be a suggested entry on CLF at this level. And that's slash. That would be your stop. That's how you read this. It's also listed as to what the heck the stock sector is in. So I wanted to make sure that everyone knew what, what areas you were looking at as far as what stock and sector that would be in. If you notice, a lot of these buys are in seasonally strong periods of time and strong sectors according to our relative strength. So if we come down here, this is a relative strength uh, analysis that uh, I posted that shares with everybody what the top performing sector is since the beginning of February. It's gold and crude oil. The worst two uh, performing sectors is Japanese yen and treasury bonds. Down below, this shows our top sectors in the S&P 500, and it shows also transportation, which is what the um, IYT is. It also shows the regional banks, which is the KRE. As it is right now, we have the three top performing sectors. We have energy, we have material, and we have healthcare, XLV. Behind that is technology. So if we go back up here, I've already kind of mentioned the uh, best performing uh, segments of the market right now. Gold, crude, NASDAQ, then spiders, the YM, TIF in order of appearance. The worst performing sectors from a month to date basis is yen and the bonds. The funny thing is, for our work on Friday, uh, we've already uh, covered what the uh, a breakdown, what it's going to, until we get a new sell signal or the market breaks, the big line in the sand for the S&Ps to defend. They turn bearish on a break under 1814. And that's this black line right here. 
and that's what the arrow is on your charts. Next, um, we did generate, interestingly enough, daily sell signals, a PPS sell signal. That's why it says that. PPS daily sell signal on notes and bonds. Also, if bonds break under 132, it triggers a last conditional change breakdown. Euro breaks under 136, it triggers a last conditional change. The yen, the yen and the bonds and the notes all generated PPS daily sell signals and their uh, relative performance, the weakest sector. So that shares with us that we're going to probably see continued weakness in both those uh, markets. Uh, further trades suggest we want to watch for live cattle breaks under 14080. It will trigger a LCC uh, trigger. Copper breaks out above 33590. Will break and generate a LCC buy a breakout. Um, then we have, of course, these are our uh, inverse ETFs. S and H is in regards to the S and P's. They gave a buy signal the other day. So when stocks go down, it goes up. But when stocks go up, it goes down. So they did what's called an equal and opposite PPS sell signal. And then that leaves us with um, the market segments. The KRE, regional banks, is still the weakest segment. But we have the XLV, B, XL materials, XLU is utilities, all made yesterday in Thursday's prices, new weekly closing highs on a daily chart. And the IYR, this is the housing, has a doji formation. So this information, these charts are there for your uh, benefit. You can go back and review these. These are in the documents tabs for our TTU members. And so um, I wanted to also make mention that yesterday we had a downturn in the um, advanced decline, but with yesterday's close, we broke out to the upside again. The market has been trying to teeter against breaking out and making a new high. It has been, again, we, this is the high for the year. That's the watermark that it's been unable to break through. It's had multiple tries. It even tried again and failed, and they're coming right back to attack it. This would be the biggest wall of worry, and if they break out of this resistance, uh, my, my next uh, major resistance is going to be uh, up uh, anywhere from the, I, and I think we're going to see uh, this 68, but this is an option expiration um, resistance, and today being option expiration day, uh, you know, this might come next week, so we'll be looking at new resistance targets for the week, but I think this thing breaks out easily, we could see, you know, from 1840, uh, a, a one to two percent move is very uh, possible, and that would finally put the indexes on a positive note on a year-to-day basis. Um, the Nasdaq uh, has broken out to new highs. The uh, Russell has not broken out to new highs. The NYSE has not. But again, the confusing mixed data is that the advanced decline analysis has broken out, and volume is strong. So this says that the game is back on to the upside. Today being a Friday is going to give us some mi mixed reviews in the sense that look at what's happening today. With the S&Ps at 1840, today being Friday morning before the market opens, we're generating a daily buy signal in the S&Ps. We had one last week in the NASDAQ, and it did follow through. So I have to trust this market um, that we are seeing more upside potential in the market. So we want you guys to take a look at the seasonally strong stocks, the seasonally strong sectors, because if we do get a breakout from here, it's going to continue up. And um, that's, uh, that concludes our uh, wrap up here for this morning. And uh, I hope you found where to get the information handy. It's in the documents tab, and we'll review all of this information in our planning and scanning in our special uh, week in review as we head here on Monday morning. So. Um, We'll be back here again Monday with a special, how did things end up and what are we looking forward to moving forward? So thank you all very much. I'm going to stop the recording here, and we'll see you guys on Planning and Scanning Monday.